Hello, what's up guys? I'm Kyle from KGR, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Werehog figure from Jazzwares. Now, I decided to do a review on this because Sonic Unleashed has been getting so popular again lately. It's been getting support on the newer Xbox console, so it's running at 4K60, and it looks beautiful. Apparently, he's getting a Funko Pop as well, so I thought, why not go back to one of the original Werehog figures from back in the day? Now, this figure was released by Jazzwares, around when the game first came out in holiday 2008. But what makes this figure very special is because during that time when Jazzwares first got the license for Sonic, they were mostly pumping out some of the same molds from Toy Island, so it's just re-releases of the same old figures. But when Sonic Unleashed was coming out, uh, they made their own original figure, and the packaging for it was also really special too, like how it had like claw marks on it, so it looked like he was trying to escape, I loved it. During the time when Sonic Unleashed was coming out, there was plenty of merchandise for the Werehog. There was this figure, there was a three inch figure, which I do have and we'll pull that up in this video as well. There was some plushes from Jazzwares and GE. There was a build a figure you got from a blind bag. There was plenty of merchandise for this character at the time, but nowadays it's getting very scarce to find these kind of figures. So trying to find a Werehog figure like this in good condition is gonna fetch you upwards to $100. So it's kind of rough. But I wanted to compare it to some of the stuff that we get today from Jack Pacific. And I want to see if one of the original Werehog figures still stands the test of time. And before I get into that review, I want to ask you guys a question of the day. What is your favorite modern Sonic game? Personally, I think Sonic Generations is a fantastic game. It controls very well. And the modding community on PC is fantastic. However, I think Sonic Unleashed has the best narrative and best visuals of a Sonic game ever. Sonic Forces tries to step it up, but the game's world is so boring that it cannot even hold a candle to Sonic Unleashed. What I love about it is not only like the way the lighting and the shadows and everything work in that game, but also the way the world is put together. It truly feels lived in, and the way the human characters are in that game, it's the first time they actually felt like they belonged there. The game has a very Disney-like tone. It takes itself seriously enough, but not too seriously like Sonic 06, and not too lighthearted like some of the recent Sonic games we've gotten recently. It takes itself seriously enough that even though it is primarily targeted for kids, anybody at any age can enjoy Sonic Unleashed. However, people are very mixed on the Werehog, especially back then, everybody hated it. If you saw the reviews that the game was getting back then, like, you would be dumbfounded. You would be so upset now. But the game has a new cult following to it, so people are begging for a new re-release for it, even though, again, it's being kind of supported on Xbox now, and that's probably the best way to play it. I bought an Xbox specifically to play Sonic Unleashed again. And for 300 bucks, get a bunch of Sonic games on there. It's almost worth it. But enough of me rambling about that. I apologize. Let's get into the review of the Werehog. And here is the hero of the night himself, the Werehog. Standing at about six and a half inches tall, this is the first Werehog figure we've ever gotten, and it is still the best looking Werehog figure we've ever gotten. Obviously, this one has been played with and worn down a little bit, as you could tell by the blue mark on the eye, the red mark on his muzzle, and some of the paint also being missing around the figure. But when this figure is brand new out of the box, it looks phenomenal. I absolutely love the way they did the fur texture on this guy. Like they even try to do that nowadays with Jack's movie Sonic figures, but they try to add fur detail. Wow, with this one, they put it on by taking out a lot of it. It looks like they try to etch out a lot of the fur in there. And the paintwork is also mostly phenomenal as well. I love the way his eyes look. Uh, the way they did the fur around his fists as well. And for Jazzwares' first original figure, at least I think this is their first original figure, they killed it. They did a fantastic job on this guy. And although he looks fantastic, unfortunately he has a very huge flaw. That is his hip design. Now if you could tell by the pins in his hips and his legs, you can see they only are meant to go out. They still articulate so you can move them forward if you want, but then the knees are gonna start bending out a different way. And the way that the ankles are set up, you can see that it's mainly meant to be only set up in this angle. And also they're very brittle, so be very careful messing with this guy. When you see this figure on eBay, 
a lot of times you're gonna either see it having missing legs or missing ears so the ones that do still look good or still in good condition they're gonna fetch upwards to a hundred dollars so i want to assume the way this figure was designed was to also tackle what would be its second weakness being very top heavy now this thing is an absolute unit this thing like it has massive arms a mo massive torso and a decently sized head having a modern sonic figure nowadays it's a very hard to have them not be top heavy so that was a huge thing they had to worry about with this figure so the way they designed the legs was that it was you can see it's meant to be stood like this and it's very hard for you to get it out of that position so it's positioned perfectly to help balance him the arms also do have a good part in it so if you have his arm backwards he's gonna fall backwards but if you have him standing normally he tackles his hop top heaviness extremely well so he's mostly a well-balanced figure as long as he's positioned right but again the way to design the figure they make it easy for you to put him in a neutral stance and still be well balanced so although on paper that's a good thing it eliminates a lot of the real playing you can do with this it doesn't really make it much of an action figure the only articulation that's gonna be really useful are the arms and its neck However, he does have quill articulation on four of his quills, so if you want them all to be down for some reason, you can do that. And if you want them all to be up for some reason, you can do that as well. I'm not sure how useful it really is, but it's there if you want to use it. But since we're going over the articulation right now, let's dive more into it. I've already went over the quills. We also get a universal neck, so you can move that wherever you need to. We get mostly universal shoulders, but they only go up so high because of how bulky those arms are, but you can still move them around wherever you need to. The elbow gets less than 90 degrees because of how bulky this thing is, but if you play Werehog in the game, you can see how his arms are very stretchy, so trying to emulate that on an action figure isn't really possible, so trying to keep the aesthetic as well as still give him articulation is kind of difficult, but I still think that even though this articulation is limited, it still functions fine enough. We don't get any wrist articulation like most other Sonic figures because there's no gloves there. There's no hip articulation right here, which is probably a better thing because again, trying to keep it well balanced and not so top heavy. And I already mentioned the hips, you can move them out and you can move them around, but these legs are very brittle, so I do not recommend moving these much at all. And then you also get less than 90 degrees on the knees as well. And then you can move the ankles wherever you need to as well. So very basic when it comes to articulation. It it does the job, but for a werehog action figure, you can't really play with him much as a werehog. You can't have him go on all fours. You can't have him really run. He's mainly there just to stand there and look tough. And that's it. And if you have his fists up in the air like this, he becomes top heavy and he's gonna wanna fall down. So you're gonna have to angle him to make sure he doesn't tip over. So there you go. When you try to position him in a somewhat action pose, his biggest weakness, his top heaviness, becomes a lot more apparent. And although those weaknesses are very loud and they are like huge things to worry about when it comes to this figure, again, because of the way this figure looks, it's almost worth the trade-off just because of the looks alone. These on here are supposed to be spikes, but they don't really add the real spike effect. I want to assume for somewhat safety reasons for the kids, but the cleats, they're rounded off. They're not too spiky, so they won't hurt you. But it brings you back to what I wanted to mention earlier, the attention to detail on this thing. For being Jazzwares' first original figure, again, top-notch. I don't see Jax Pacific actually topping this. Let's say, let's pretend that Jax ends up making a Werehog figure. They can make a better figure toy-wise. They can make it much more accessible to actually play with. However, I don't think they're gonna match the like quality and like aestheticness of this thing. And back then, this is like a $10 figure. This wasn't any collector's edition thing. Like this is just, a standard action figure that you could just buy on the shelf. It kind of reminds me of how like the Resource figures used to be and stuff back then with Crash Bandicoot or the old McFarlane figures. It reminds me of a 90s figure almost. But no, this figure was released in 2008 
and it makes me feel like a boomer by saying they don't make them the way they used to anymore. However, I do want to compare this to some of the other figures that we get nowadays. So let's bring them out. The first thing I want to compare them to is actually one that's around the same era, and that is Jazzwares 3 inch Werehog figure. It doesn't hold the same amount of detail compared to the 5 inch. They look night and day, no pun intended. This one does add hip movement, like they add like a torso joint like right here, and they have the legs being able to move forward, but because these joints are also so small, uh, they do end up wearing out really quickly over time, so he has to rely on a stand as well as sticky tack to make sure this guy can still stand up, because it's still this guy is still very top heavy, so I'm thankful to have both of these figures. I think the Werehog, like the mini one, sells for like 50 bucks for some reason, it's stupid. And since he's about six and a half inches tall, if you compare him to a four inch Jax, obviously it's gonna be quite the size difference between the two, so comparing it to him is not really fair. But seeing a four inch Werehog figure probably could look really good. So if you would like to see a four inch Jax Werehog figure, uh, let me know in the comments. Hopefully Jax sees that and hopefully that might happen in the future. Especially around Halloween, why not? I've had somebody ask me this in my one Sonic review, but here he is next to the Figu Arts Mario. And this is something I push very heavily. He size wise compares really well to the four inch Sonic, but that's it. You're not gonna compare him to the collector's edition Sonic. Like he's too small. But the main reason I bought this figure is because of how well he stands compared to the collector's modern Sonic. If you're trying to go for a Sonic Unleashed display, get the modern Jack specific figure. Despite him being overpriced, $50 is a little bit tough for a figure like that because he doesn't come with enough. But these two look fantastic together. And again, that's like the main reason why I bought this figure again, because he looks so good next to modern Sonic over here. Again, I wanna bring up the fact Figure Arts Mario next to that Sonic. That's not happening. It is not close to height at all. But when I stood these two next to each other when I first got this figure, I got so excited and so happy. This alone is worth getting this. But it's probably gonna set you back about 150 bucks to get both of these guys. So overall, what are my thoughts on this figure? Although, aesthetically wise, he's fantastic looking. Action figure wise, He's not fantastic. He is very minimal, and some would probably say disappointing. But if you want a good Werehog figure, your options are very limited. This is this is the figure to get if you want a Werehog figure. But do I recommend spending $100 on that? Oh, that's completely your call. I, I, I think that's tough. I had to do it myself, and it sucked, but he does look really good. But do know going into this thing, it's going to be a shelf piece. It's not going to be much of a play thing for you. I love the way he looks, but I don't like the way he plays. I wish the same can be said about the gameplay. Back then, people hated the way he looked and hated the way he played. <laughs> but until Jack Specific comes out with their own Werehog figure, this is the one to get. Uh, there's a few options out there for you, but this is the top tier one. It's the first, but also the best. And that's it for this review. So if you're new and you like what you saw, you know what to do. In the description is gonna be my social media. I post a lot of action figure photography on my Instagram, so please check that out. And if you like talking about Sonic action figures, be sure to sub because I live stream and it'll be really nice for you to talk in the chat about that kind of thing. But like I said earlier, thank you so much for watching this video. You guys are awesome and I love you guys to death. So I'll see you guys in the next one, so peace, peace.